Good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Kane, and I'm the Marketing Manager for Wonderware NorCal. Thank you for attending our webinar today, where we will give an overview of InTouch Machine Edition and how to integrate Rockwell Control, Log Control Logic's tags in just minutes. After the webinar this morning, we will be doing a short Q&A. Please type any questions or comments into the Q&A box, the chat box, or email us at webinar at norcal.wonderware.com. Now I'd like to introduce your presenter for today's webinar, Niels Anderson from Schneider Electric, which is now the parent company of Wonderware. Niels has worked in the industrial software and automation industry since 1991 and has spent most of his career in the Wonderware family. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Niels. Good morning, Niels. Good morning. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you to everyone who's attending this webinar. So let me give you a quick introduction to the agenda we have and then go into the details. So first, we're going to show you uh, InTouch Machine Edition, the features in a, in a PowerPoint presentation. Then we're going to do a uh, product demonstration. Uh, before we go in and look at some reference architectures to show how we can integrate InTouch Machine Edition into larger systems. Uh, and the next step then is to do another demonstration to show how we can seamlessly integrate with Rockwell PLCs. And we do this in less than four minutes before we finally, finally at the end have a, another demo where we convert a Panel Builder 32 application into an InTouch Machine Edition application. So what is InTouch Machine Edition? It is a hardware independent panel HMI software for machine buildings and remote units. What the market we go after here, or the, the place where we believe that this product fits very well, is where you typically have a panel HMI, and quite often this is dominated by the traditional hardware panel HMIs. It has great integration with PLCs. I'll show you a list of the PLC communication drivers we have. And it also has great integration with the Wonderware system platform, which makes it really easy to use this HMI as part of a larger Wonderware system. We see it as the right tool for the job. It is very simple and easy to use and very well fit for the type of HMI that sits on a computer or on a remote unit. So it's also a very much more a powerful alternative to traditional panel HMIs that you typically would use for this job. So if you look at the features at a glance, uh, we focus this as a good HMI both for end users, so manufacturing companies, and also machine builders and system builders. The system supports up to 3,000 tags, and it supports two operating systems, so Windows Embedded Compact, previously known as Windows CE, and also Windows Embedded Standard. It is a proven and mature technology with new features, even though it is a new product we've launched now. It is a continuation as what many of you may have known as InTouch CE. But what we've done is we added a new editor with better features for machine level HMI. We added stronger integration with the other OneWare products. And we added support for Windows Embedded Standards. Previously, this product only supported Windows CE or Windows Embedded Compact. And then finally, we added better PLC integration and more communication drivers. So we say that we can connect to almost any controller, and uh, I believe that that is true. You see here a list of the different brands of controllers we can connect to. We have about 100 different drivers, uh, which has in total 240 protocols. We also have some generic protocols, both for ASCII and binary, so both on serial and TCP IP connections, which makes it possible for you to write your own drivers if you don't find one that fits in this list. We also have a toolkit, that allows you to go in and, and build drivers from scratch. So now let's go in and, and do a quick product overview. I have a number of virtual machines running on this PC. One of them here is running Windows Embedded Standard. And uh, this PC is, ba is basically just emulating what we run on a panel computer. I'm going to step you through the simple features. So here is the Windows, uh, the InTouch Machine Edition runtime on this computer. So just very quickly, the features, the product has all the capabilities you would expect from a traditional uh, panel HMI, so machine level HMI. It has bar graphs, color changes, a different type of text boxes you can enter information into. It has visibility links, rotation, and so on. You can resize graphics. You also have position, so you can move things around. You have hyperlinks, different types of buttons. We also have some features you typically don't find in machine-level panel HMIs, such as the Windows controls, the, uh, the drop-down color boxes, radio buttons, uh, check boxes, and so on, list, list boxes. We have some very powerful features that makes it easy to build user interfaces, such as a smart message, 
and I'm going to demonstrate that later to, in the presentation, where we just take a, an integer from the PLT to show, for instance, which phase the machine is in. We have all the different push buttons, and we have a really powerful grid that can be linked either to files or to databases. This is one of the areas where we do differentiate ourselves from other type of HMI. Included in the product, there's also recipe management. And this recipe management is not like the, the Wonderware in batch or the Recipe Manager Pro that we have. It is a very simple parameter management. So if you have a list of parameters that you want to download into the PLC and then execute the PLC code against, you can do that. So you can go in here and just load a list of, of, of the, uh, the recipe and then save it and change the recipe and so on and then download it to the PLC. There's also built-in reports. And again, this is very simple reporting. It is not the advanced SQL Server reporting or our information server reporting. It is basically the ability to take a snapshot of information from the HMI and show this or, or print it. So we have the three different formats of reports. We have an H, you know, a text report, you can save that. And it basically just creates a text file. You see this is a snapshot. You can take the same information and save it in a CSV format which is very good for opening up in products such as Excel, where you now can do further analysis. And then finally, we have the ability to create an HTML report, which then just allows you to open this up in a, in a web browser. And here you can then go in and put logos and other fancy formatting on it. There's also a built-in trending package. Uh, so we have native trending and native uh, historization on the product itself and proprietary, as well as integration into the Wonderware historian. So this is a, a trend that will run down at the machine panel information. You can go in and look at it. You can zoom in. You can select which tags you want. And all of this is built in and included in the product. The final feature I would like to show you is just alarming. So there's built in an alarm subsystem with uh, both digital and analog alarms. So you can go in and generate alarms here. You have, if you, you have the ability to go in and, and, and acknowledge alarms. So if I go in and create another new high alarm here, I can now go in and provide a comment. So this is, yes, it's my comment that is then provided if you have a 21 CFR Part 11 compliant uh, manufacturing environment, for instance. And as I said, all of this in, is included in the base product. We also have alarm history, so you can look at that. So that was a quick introduction to the product itself. Uh, let me talk a little bit about some reference architectures of how you would use this product together with other Wonderware products. So first of all, it is great by itself. You don't need to go and use other Wonderware products. If you're just looking for a panel HMI, if you're a machine builder that wants to have an HMI on your machine and you're looking for something that can connect to multiple different PLCs that is built with a software mindset, so it's easy to use, very flexible, very expandable, expandable, then InTouch Machine Edition is a good product for you to look at. It can connect to one or multiple PLCs at the same time, and uh, our bigger systems has more communication drivers, so the biggest one has about five drivers that come with it, but you can connect to as many PLCs as the PLC protocol support. The second architecture I would like to show you here is a plant architecture. And this architecture here is just to show you how we can have in-touch machine edition on the machine level. And you can go in here and have it at the machine level. You can connect it to, to multiple PLCs at the same time. And then have in-touch machine edition represent the state of the machine via almost like a proxy to the machine, which means that you can now take a higher level system such as system platform and connect it to in-touch machine edition. And all the machines now look the same independent of what, what type of PLC you have but both the PLC brand and PLC version. It makes it really easy to do integration. Then on system platform, you can now go in and connect both the live data from Intel's Machine Edition, but we also have a native connection from Intel's Machine Edition into the Wonderware Historian with store and forward capabilities so that you can actually push data in. And we, the third integration point we have is the ability to show graphics. So from InTouch from system platform, you can actually point to your InTouch Machine Edition application and look at the graphics on that machine. And this is not the type of graphics where you see from, from some other suppliers, which is VNC, where you take over the screen, you actually get a new session into the machine HMI so that the operator can look at things that are happening on the machine 
Now, the, the, the control room operator can look at things that are happening on the machine while the plant floor operator is looking at a different screen. And this makes it really easy to integrate without having to recreate tags and without having to recreate graphics. We have the same uh, architecture also for geographically distributed applications. So if you are in uh, water and wastewater, if you're in oil and gas pipelines, different type of utilities, transportation, any type of communi communication infrastructure that need to be uh, monitored, then this is a very good way of doing it. So out at the tele telemetry station where you may have a, a, a PLC on RTU, you can then put in-touch machine edition out there that then will collect information and provide a local interface for the operator when he goes out to the machine. And because we have the store and forward capability to our historian, we can now communicate over an intermittent communication infrastructure. So even if the communication goes down, you will store the history at this point. And then when it comes back up again, you will then push the history to the historian so that everyone in the central SCADA control room can look at that information. The final architecture I would like to share with you here is one for machine builders. And this, in this case, we are looking at multiple uses of the same information. So imagine that if you are a machine builder, they want to go in and provide performance monitoring uh, services to your customers. You can now use InTouch Machine Edition, deliver the machine to the end customer, and then using our web connectivity, our, our cloud connectivity, you can then go and create reports that is being pushed onto our historian server either in the cloud or in the corporate office of the uh, machine builder. This allows both the end, the end user, so the manufacturing company, to get access to the data, as well as the machine builder to get access to the data. And you can do things such as setting up performance contracts. You can go in and learn about the machine performance over time so you can improve machine performance. And you can help your customer go in and make the machine run better. So, and I would like you to take you to the, uh, to the second of, of our demonstration here, which is how to we, we can seamlessly integrate with a Rockwell PLC. We're going to do this in, in four minutes or less. So I have, as I showed you, I have a couple of virtual machines. Uh, I have the, the one virtual machine here, which has in-touch machine edition running in a, in a Windows embedded standard. So it's emulating what would happen on a panel. And I have another virtual machine here which is running Windows 8.1, which has a configuration environment in it. So what I'm going to do now is that I have a completely empty application here. I just created one called L5K and then today's date. And I'm going to go in and show you how we can do tag integration with Rockwell so to create a single tag database. The way we do this, just click on project, click on communication, and here you see we have the uh, ability to add a tag integration data source. And we have a number of providers here. This is just a handful, a subset of what you saw in the communication protocols. But one of them we, that we have is the, the uh, Rockwell RS Logics 5000 family. So this will connect to compact logics, uh, control logics, and so on. So we select that, and then we give it a name. This becomes a prefix to the, any of the tags that we create in our system. And in this case, I have a mixing and blending system, so it's going to call it Mixer01. And I add it. Then I go in and give it a PLC address. And I have actually a PLC. Let me show you. I didn't show you our diagram here. But what I have is that I have a one virtual machine for with my configuration environment. I have another virtual machine with my runtime environment. And then I have a compact logic sitting on my network with an IP address of 192.168.1. So if I go back into my environment here and just type in that IP address, choose the CPU slot number, it's zero, and then I choose an L5K file. And an L5K file is, the, is a file that is uh, uh, created from your RS Logix 5000 configuration tool. It is an export file that has the full PLC configuration in it. So I can just open that and say OK. And now the system in the background set up all the communication drivers, everything that needs to be done in order to communicate with the device. So I can now go straight in and start creating some screens. So I'm just going to create a screen here with default settings. And on the screen here, I'm going to put a tank. So I have my tank 01 here. And this tank I'm going to tie into a PLC address. 
So you see here, when I, when I browse to this, it gives me an overview of all the different tags that I have in my system. So I have project tags, which I don't have any one yet because I haven't, managed, I haven't created any tags. I have system tags, which are predefined in my system. And then I have devices, which is what I have as a shared tag database with the PLC. And the one I created was Mixer01. And here you have all the different, uh, all the different tags in the PLC. In this case, I want to take level transmitter 1001 underscore I, which stands for indicator, and just say OK. And now close it, and then go to runtime. And I have an emulator here in this virtual machine as well that will emulate what looks like the panel. So now it goes in, it connects to the PLC, and you now see I have communication and data coming back from the PLC. So that's how easy it is to get set up. So the next step I want to do here is now to go in and just build my build my system. You can see down here, by the way, the communication I have with the PLC. So I want to add some more elements to my tank systems. I want to have some valves. So I put on a valve here and a valve down here. I want to have a uh, pump. And I want to have a motor. that motor there. I'm not going to spend much time uh, making this look very pretty. I just want to send it back. I just want to put these elements on the screen. I also want to show you the smart methods I talked that we talked about earlier. So I go in here, choose my smart methods, and just put it on the screen. And now I'm going to show how we can build a very quick little tank system. So just double click on the smart methods go in and choose the tag that I want to represent the, the, uh, the tank system state. And here I have a tag called uh, tank one sequence uh, step number down here, which is just an integer that has this, the face information in the tank. I can now go in and tie this to a certain number of messages. I could tie it to colors. I could tie it to bitmaps and so on. But I'm just going to use this, the text here. So I know that uh, zero is stopped. One is, uh, I'm sorry, zero is uh, idle. One is fill. Two is uh, fill mix. Three is uh, rain, actually. No, I'm sorry, I, I, uh, I need to, this one is stopped. <laughs> I, I didn't do this this morning. Two is, fill, uh, is, uh, is idle. Three is fill a mix. The fill. Three is the fill and mix. And four is drain. Okay, like that. So that's just the message we put into the system. And you tie this to your PLT program. This will be specific for what you build. Now I can just leave this dialog open and start navigating to the other elements in my screen here. So I have my valve. So in this case here, I have my valve one zero zero one. Indicator energized, so well one zero zero one indicator energized, valves one zero zero two. So you see, it's very easy. I just navigate around, click the different elements, and as I do that, it just links into the common tag database I have with the PLC. And then I have my pump one zero zero one indicator running. I have my motor one zero zero one indicator running. And that's everything I need to do. So now I can go in and just go back to my runtime system. And you will see that the, the system is now in a filling mixing state. You can see the, the valve is open, so it's filling. The valve is closed, and the pump is stopped, so it's complete. So that's what I did on the development station. And I want to go in uh, and show how we can download this into the, uh, into the runtime station. The first thing I have to do is just uh, save my screen. I'm just going to keep that as screen three, and then set this screen as my startup screen. From my development station, I can now go in and just connect to my remote station. And I know the IP address here is 192.168.1.102. So just connect, and it now says it's connected to the device. So I want to show you what happens at the remote device. So I'm going to open both of them at the same time here. So you can see this is my runtime environment over here, and it's my development environment. 
So the first thing I want to do is just go in and show you how I can remotely control the application. So let me stop the application. And you see now I actually manage the application remotely. I can go and download the file to the, uh, to the system that says it has never seen this application before. So I just want to create the application. And it's now actually sending the files down. And you'll see here the files being sent. And now I can just start it. And here's my system running on my remote panel and it's set up the communication and everything is uh, configured and everything is running and, and the system is, is running the way it should be. So that's how easy it is to set up this type of integration. The, the final thing I want to do is to go in and talk about converting a um, panel builder 32 application. So for those of you who know panel builder 32, uh, it is the configuration tool for the panel view. Uh, this is an older technology from, from Rockwell. But the way it works is you have your Panel Builder 32, you build the application and you, you download it to the panel view. In Panel Builder 32, you also have a feature that allows you to export a Panel Builder report. This is a text file that contains the configuration of the Panel Builder application. We can take that file, import it in touch, in touch machine edition, the configuration environment, and then deploy that to an in-touch machine edition runtime. And what you'll see is that the application will look exactly the same, so you don't get a much fancier application than you have today, but you get a lot of other benefits. I mean, the, the most important one, I think, is a path forward for your application, because Panel Builder 32 is, is a technology that is not being taken forward. You can now take it into in-touch machine edition, which has a, a clear development path forward. You also get PLC independence, so if you want to go in and add other PLCs to this, you can do it. You get panel hardware independence, so you can use our Wonderware panels, but you can also go in and use other, uh, other panels if you want to. You get flexibility and expandability, so you can now actually take your application and make it much more valuable and powerful than it was before. You get connectivity, not only to the PLCs, as we said, but also into the Wonderware uh, systems. So let me go in and, and just do that. So here, I'm going back to my, my application here. I'm just going to create a, a, uh, a new project. Let me actually go in first and just stop it. I'm going to create a new project. And I'm just going to call this uh, NorCal PB. I'm going to set the resolution to, um, to uh, 640 by 480, which is the size of the application I'm importing. So now I have my, my empty application here. I click on my uh, import wizard. And here I select my import wizard for panel builder. I browse to my exported file. And in this case here, I put that in the same folder over here. It's called TC10, that's just the file name that was given. And I give the, an IP address of the, uh, of the PLC. And in this case, I don't have a PLC, so I'm just gonna fake one and put in a PLC slot number. So I can't show any data that's being put in. I also can put in a, a prefix. So in this case, I'm just gonna call it uh, PLC underscore, for instance. It's just good to make sure you don't create duplicate tags or systems tags and other, any other tags that are in the system. So here you see, this is a list of all the tags I can in, import from the system itself. It put the prefix on it. I can choose which ones I want and which ones I don't want. There's 44 of them. In this case, I'm just going to choose all of them. Hit finish. So now in the background, the system goes in and it imports the tags. It creates these worksheets. So there's a worksheet for communication, for instance, that's being set up to, uh, to go in and set up the communication driver and configure all the elements associated with it. You will also go in and create all the windows and all those elements. And this takes about uh, 30 to 45 seconds. So you have to just have to bear with us while it, while it does the import itself. So here you see all the windows being imported. And now it's finished importing the application.
So just to show you what it's done, I can go to I go to runtime here. And here you can see this is the application that it's imported. You can see that this is actually a standard uh, panel builder application that comes as a demo with its product itself. Here you see, for instance, the features. This is what was in there, the three-inch monochrome display, the communication setup, and so on, all those elements that are in the device itself. You can also see that we have some, um, some uh, screens. So I can take my bottle filling screen here. And here you can see some of the animations that is in that system by itself. So it's very simple setup and, and very easy to use. But the problem is that you keep any, you end up with the same, you end up with the same screen. So what a lot of our customers actually do is that they, they like having the conversion utilities because it reduces the risk of the project. But quite often when they see how easy it is to build applications with uh, in touch machine edition, then they will just go in and build new screens because they would they would like to improve it and not keep it the way it is. So just to summarize, uh, the features and benefits we, we believe we bring to you with uh, with this product. First of all, we have the OneWare portfolio integration. Uh, so what we get is an autonomous machine. So it, it InTouch Machine Edition can run by itself. It doesn't depend on any other OneWare products but it's also integrated into the SCADA and line of plant level systems, so it makes it really easy to take that and make it part of a bigger system. And that's one thing we've seen that's quite important to our customers. And many of these panel HMIs today, they are only clients to the PLC. So if you want to go and send data to the operator on the screen, for instance, you have to send it through the PLC and then back up through the HMI. A lot of configuration and a lot of limitations in what you can do. We also see that we give you hardware independence. And this is on a panel site. So as I said, we have a whole portfolio of uh, Wonderware industrial computers to you that, that we can use. So you have the right panel for the right job here. And you can move the application when, when needed if you have our customer first agreement. So that means that your software application actually ex extends the life expectancy beyond the, the life expectancy of the hardware itself. It makes it really easy to move it to the platform you want. We showed you the single integrated tag database with RS Logic. And by the way, one thing I didn't talk about is that if you do a change to the PLC programming, you can then go and resynchronize the L5K file, and it will actually update everything and make sure everything is taken care of. But this makes it really easy to build and maintain your solutions without having to replace the PLC. So the next element here is that we have 240 protocols supported in about 100 plus drivers. We also have OPC support, and these drivers are all included with the product. It allows you to easily integrate all PLCs on a single mach on a machine in a single HMI. So if you have a motion control system running Modbus, for instance, and a uh, and a discrete PLC that runs uh, the, the Rockwell communication protocols, you can then go in and integrate these two. We can also deliver the PLC that the market needs without changing your HMI, which is very important if you're a machine builder. So say that you're delivering machines to Europe and the preferred PLC there is the Siemens, you can then go in and deliver a Siemens PLC in Europe and a Rockwell PLC in North America without having to change the user interface and, and all the things that the operator sees. You can also choose the best and most cost effective PLC, so you're not tied to a single brand. And you rarely have to buy any additional drivers. We showed you how we can convert your panel builder 32 application. And by doing that, we're extending the life of your application and we provide you a, a starting point for a better application. As I said, most of our users go in and they, they, uh, they will then go in and uh, build a new application. And by the way, the panel builder 32 uh, conversion utility is something that, that we have here as an internal tool. Uh, there are certain things associated with the conversion that are not uh, trivial, uh, such as part of the alarm integration and part of the uh, part of the security integration. So because of that, we believe it's more advantage that we can go and convert the application for you as a service instead of you having to learn how to do all these things yourself. We also showed you how you have simple and easy to use HMI editing tools. We built a small application here in less than four minutes for a for a tank system. And uh, we believe that that is both helping you starting up, building, a, building your, and maintaining your application quickly, and also moving the application forward throughout the full life cycle. 
So it's a complete machine H uh, HMI, and there is uh, less engineering required to solve most of these tasks. So that uh, concludes the presentation part of this, and Kelly, I would now like to hand it back to you. Sure, yes, um, let me go ahead and um, a few questions have come in, so let me go ahead and uh, get those for you. Um, the first one is, are there any communication drivers for Siemens? Yes, uh, I mean, good good question. As I showed you, actually, if I can go back to the slide here with my with the drivers, we have uh, many other drivers in this Rockwell, and Siemens is, is one of them. And we support a number of Siemens devices and different protocols, and we include, the, for instance, the industrial Ethernet, the uh, MPI, so the multi-purpose interface, a multi-point interface, which is a, an RS-45 based one, and Profibus, and also other drivers for Siemens. Okay, so I think just to add to that, can I build, just to clarify, can I build an application that can talk to Control Logix and a Modbus device at the same time? Yeah, you can. Uh, and that's actually something that uh, a lot of our users find advantages. It's because we have the drivers in the HMI, we can go in and we can connect to all these different uh, pro uh, protocols at the same time. So we, we can do that. Uh, we can also, as I mentioned, we have different drivers uh, configurations for the different sizes. The smaller system we deliver is a 100 tag system. That only includes one driver. So if you choose a 100 tag system, you would only connect to one type of PLC or one brand of PLC at once. You can connect to multiple PLC, but only once. But if you choose our bigger system, such as the 3,000 tags, you get five drivers. Uh, one thing that you also will see is that all the drivers are included uh, on the uh, DVD, so it's not like when you order the software, you have to choose which drivers you want to work with. It's all included. You just choose at the configuration time which ones you want to integrate. And we actually also have users that have done integration between it. So if you want to have, a, as I said, a, a PLC doing your discrete control and a motion control system doing your motion system, then instead of trying to get the PLC and the motion control systems to talk to each other, they actually pass the data in through InTouch Machine Edition and make it really easy to integrate the two. So um, it, it makes PLT to PLT communication possible for non-deterministic type communication. Great, thank you. Um, do you have a web page where we can find more information to connect to Siemens S7300 or S7400 PLC? Uh, yes, the easiest way to do this actually is to go to our download page and download the software. And uh, there is there is a 40-hour evaluation period. And when you do that, you will get the software with all the drivers on there. And uh, the drivers have full communications in it. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Just go in, look at the uh, communication of the driver itself. Uh, in a follow-up, we can provide a, a link to that download page so that you, uh, you can do it. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Do we need to deploy an orchestra platform to the computer that is running in touch machine, machine edition to integrate it with the system platform? No, you don't. Let me just show you the reference architecture here. So uh, the the way that it works is that in touch machine edition is completely autonomous. So even though it can talk to system platform, there is really nothing that from system platform that has to be on this computer itself. So we actually have a what we call a DA server, a data acquisition server. It's like a communication driver that runs up at the system platform level and connects to InTouch Machine Edition. So InTouch Machine Edition almost shows up like a PLC in the system platform. So, so nothing needs to be on that on that node. Okay, and it appears this is. Um... Oh, wait, one more question. Um, do you have a demo project for an S7300 S7400 PLC which we can use? Yes, uh, we, we, we have a, um, uh, as I say, we, we have a demo download on our website, uh, so you can download this and try it yourself. Uh, we can also, if you want to, of course, help you uh, get this set up. So uh, one, of the, uh, one of our application engineers can help you set this up. So, uh, so yes, we, we, can, we can absolutely get that done. Okay, thank you. And then this appears to be the last question. Do I need to use a Tier 2 historic to get stored and forward for historical data from InTouch Machine Edition? No, we don't. So for those of you, and by the way, it's actually on this slide, uh, but for those of you who don't uh, okay. uh, know the, the terminology, within the OneWare, so the OneWare historian is, is a very powerful high-end historian that goes beyond the historical capabilities you have in InTouch Machine Edition. You can do uh, much uh, more powerful retrieval and analysis on the data itself. 
so, and we have this in multiple levels. And a tier one historian is where we typically collect the data the first time and then we push the data to a tier two historian who then can be used at a corporate level, for instance. And uh, most of our other systems require a tier two in order to do that multi-tier integration between two history subsystems. And here we don't. You can push the data directly into a tier one historian, but if you have a tier two historian, you can also push it into that. It's really no different. Okay, great. Thank you. And I think that wraps up our questions. Let me just make sure. Yes. So um, I think that wraps up our webinar as well. So thank you, Niels, and thank you everyone for attending. Um, if you would like to review any portion of this webinar again or share it with colleagues, a recording will be available on our website as well as our YouTube channel in just a few hours. So again, thank you for everyone for attending. Um, if you have any questions after the webinar, feel free to email us at webinar at norcal.wonderware.com. And uh, everyone have a great weekend. Thanks.